Hey everybody, welcome back to Big Mike's Garage. I'm Big Mike and this is my garage. So today we're going to hope do a hopefully short video. Uh, we have all of our parts here for the 9th Gen uh, Civic Retrofit that I'm going to do in a couple of months. Tonight we're just going to kind of do a dry run, get everything put together and hooked up and try it out in the Civic and make sure everything works. Alright, so we're going to start putting these projectors together for the test, uh, which is just going to be putting the bulbs in so we can test them out. Again, I'm going to be really careful with these, or at least I do because a little bit more money on these. So. worked with these before but they should just put the bulbs in there all right guys we just got one of the bulbs finally in there these moto holders are a little uh i mean obviously they have to be tight right you want to have a good secure fit on these bulbs but kind of a pain in the butt i'm gonna try to show you the second one the first one just took so long I'd had my wife put the camera down and help me out. We'll try to do this one, see how I can see it. So you put that little, it's on these moto holders. I thought it was out, I thought it was wrong at first, but it's got a little slash there. It's kind of like at a 45 degree angle and it matches the slash on the base of the H1 bulb. And it just kind of sits there very lightly like that. And see, so you can't spin it. it, just spins a little bit. But that's the way it sits. Be really careful inserting your bulb, obviously. All right. This is where it was kind of a pain in the butt because it didn't really want to fit. And you can kind of see it wants to snap out. So just try to get it set as best you can, like that. Start threading the lock ring on there. I like to go in reverse first, that way you don't cross thread. It's a little trick one of my buddies taught me a long time ago. And once you get that threaded on, now I think it, it actually locked. Oh yeah, great hold. Okay, so yeah, they're a little bit of a pain in the butt. So that's the way I would say is bulb first, then, actually no, set them together. Try to set it in, the motor holder is not going to fit the way it should all the way in there. But once you get it threaded, it'll put some pressure on it and seat it. And then as you can see... Come in here. Does not wiggle at all. And that's when I knew there was something wrong the first time I tried to set this. I didn't really look at any instructions, but it was just wiggling all over the place. You obviously don't want that. Because that's what these motor holders are for. It puts even pressure across the whole base of the bulb. Doesn't move at all. Perfect. Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, I decided that it was too much of a pain in the butt to show all the detail on this wiring. This is just a dry run, so I really don't care at this point. I'm tired. But basically you have the positive and negative from the battery going to the harness and then you have the OEM input uh, right there. That's what takes signal from just one of the headlight bulbs from the car. And then that sends power to each ballast. Can't see that one over there, but this ballast is right here. Which obviously there's the ballast to the igniter and that feeds the back of the bulb. And like I said, I just wanted to do a dry run, so uh, apologies for not showing you all the detail, but it ended up being a huge pain in the butt. So anyway, um, that's the wiring, basically. I'll do more detail on this on the next video. I'm just, I just wanted to get this done tonight. And this is the tested product. Yeah, and this is the Morimoto Mini H1 8.0 with the Xenon Depot uh, rebased Genuine Phillips capsule to a H1 base. And they look great, I gotta say. I'm thinking these may be brighter than my CRV. We'll give you a couple of beam patterns here. Give you a couple of beam patterns here. Have my wife help me with that. Go handle the high beams, please. Hold on, though. 
so, and obviously these aren't level or anything, I just have them set up on a wood block so I can kind of move them around. But you can see the cutoff is gorgeous. Even here in my garage, just on the wall, it looks amazing. I mean, look at that. It has great blues and purples, looks really nice. And again, this one's kind of, again, it's kind of off kilter, but uh, they just look, they look great. I tell you, it was a pain in the butt getting the moto holder set and then um, getting all the wiring done, but this really gets me excited to go ahead and get these done. See so yeah, how the cutoff is just perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to have my wife hit the brights. Go ahead and hit the, white, the brights, please. Oh, yeah. Off. Just kind of cycle through like every three seconds. Obviously the brights. Off. And you know it's pretty cool since they're out. You can actually see the little little motor moving the cutoff shield out of the way. Alright. Now, uh, I've noticed and I wondered this on the test video from the retrofit source, but I've noticed that the high beam, there's like a trapezoid shape to it on the top left, and I figured out why. Since these are two and a half inch diameter uh, projectors and projector housings, there's just not enough room, I guess, to have that cutoff shield move completely out of the way. So the high beam can't be just completely open like it is in the D2S 5.0, but that's fine. I imagine these high beams are going to be ridiculous either way. So, there you have it. Uh, that's just the dry run. Everything's working great. And I cannot wait to get these done because, man, that looks great. that's going to be about it. Go ahead and take this apart uh, real quick and uh, be back here in a couple of months when we actually get these things uh, retrofitted. And again, I just, ah, that cutoff looks so good.